Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Rail Splitter Athletics Report. I am your host, Rusty Peace, and we have officially ventured into the month of October. You know, we've got uh, just a few weeks before uh, Lincoln Memorial University men's women's basketball season gets underway. I know practice season, uh, official practice schedule gets underway on October 15th, and with November comes that uh, infamous no-shave November that a lot of the LMU student athletes go through, or at least the men's anyway. And uh, I'm thinking about joining that this year. I don't know if my uh, executive producer, Tony Spinoza, will support that at all. But, uh, you know, No Shave November seems to be kind of a popular thing with some of the male athletes here on campus. So we'll see about that. We've got a lot to talk about tonight in terms of the last week in Lincoln Memorial University Athletics and the week ahead. And we hope that you'll stay with us for that. To keep up to date on all that's going on with LMU Athletics, pull up the LMU Athletics website, www.lmurailsplitters.com. Stay with us. When we come back, we're going to get into the last week in LMU Athletics. Nestled at the foot of the Cumberland Gap, Lincoln Memorial University honors the vision and spirit of Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln's values are perfectly in sync with the modern educational experience at LMU. Our students find personal attention is a way of life and a way to success. If Lincoln Memorial University fits your vision of college, visit our website at lmunet.edu for more information. The J. Frank White Academy is more than a high school. Your child will have room to grow in mind, body, and spirit. Small, safe learning environments, individualized learning plans, and cutting edge technology. Every child deserves a quality education in a safe, nurturing environment. Our college prep program teaches a love of learning, self-discipline, and service to others. The Academy is fully accredited by Advanced Ed. You have a choice at the J. Frank White Academy. Since 1973, DeRoyal has been a leader and an innovator in manufacturing products for the healthcare industry. DeRoyal supplies more than 20,000 products and product lines such as acute care, orthopedics, wound care, and trauma. DeRoyal is proud to be the largest supplier of orthopedic soft goods to clinics and hospitals in the nation. Since its start in Tazewell, Tennessee, DeRoyal has grown to open factories in over 29 locations worldwide and employs over 2,000 people. DeRoyal, a name you can trust and an employer you can count on. Looking for efficient, compassionate, and comprehensive health care for you and your family? Visit University Medical Clinic. All providers are faculty members of LMU's The Bus College of Osteopathic Medicine and are board certified in their specialty. Multiple specialties available including family medicine, pediatrics, OBGYN, and osteopathic manipulative medicine with locations in Harrogate, Tazewell, and New Tazewell, and most insurance plans accepted. University Medical Clinic is here to serve you. Call 423-869-7193 for an appointment. University Medical Clinic. The Rail Splitter Athletics Report. Let's get to business tonight, folks. We got a lot to talk about. Last Friday, Jenny Michael and the Lincoln Memorial University volleyball team hit the road again in South Atlantic Conference play when they traveled down to Hartsville, South Carolina to take on Coker University. The LMU women entered their first meeting of the year with the Cobras on the heels of back to back wins over league opponents Newberry College and most recently Tusculum College and riding a three and one conference mark. Although the Cobras had the home court advantage, it didn't make any difference as Michael Ann and her team found a way to defang the Cobras with a 3-0 victory by winning 25-14, 25-15, and 25-13 while picking up their fourth conference win of the year. When we talked with Michael earlier this week, she was extremely pleased with how her team played last Friday evening. Yeah, this Friday was nice for us to finally break the curse that we had been encountering, we called it our Friday funk. Um, we had not been performing well this season thus far on any Friday occurrences. So to have a chance to travel the, the farthest conference trip that we have um, and to play, play in the gym and the atmosphere that they had, it was really nice for us to be able to come away 3-0. Now on Saturday, the Lady Rail Splitters traveled down, or actually traveled north to Wingate, North Carolina to take on the league's only undefeated team when they visited the Bulldogs of Wingate University in the doghouse. Shelton Collier and his Bulldogs boasted a perfect 5-0 conference mark entering Saturday's matchup, and despite a strong showing by the Lincoln Memorial women in the opening set, Wingate proved to be too much as the Lady Rail Splitters' uh, uh, streak was stopped uh, with three matches uh, to remain at, or to move, uh, actually to to fall from the unbeaten uh, in sack play. Wingate posted 25-23, 25-15, and 25-15 wins to drop the Lady Rail Splitters to 8-6 and six overall and to 4-2 and in conference play. 
We did, and perhaps uh, in fairness, you know, the scoreboard was a little bit misleading in our favor, actually. Um, Wingate very uncharacteristically made a lot of mistakes in their first set, and so that helped us out on the scoreboard. Uh, we were, you know, a little frustrated in being able to, on Friday, pull off the victory, and we'd been playing very well on Saturday, and we just didn't come out and perform like we had been all season thus far, and to be going up against the number one team in the conference and to not compete in the way that we can and that we have consistently, that was very frustrating. This weekend, the LMU women will be back on the home floor in the Mary E. Mars Gymnasium when they play host to Queens University Friday evening at Catawba College on Saturday afternoon. And in talking with Michael, while it'll be good to be playing at home again, she knows that her team will have to bring its A game against both opponents this weekend. We are very, very excited to have a home weekend. I uh, actually saw a couple of the girls yesterday out enjoying some of the beautiful weather that we have, just going for a walk, going for a little stroll. And we were talking about it, and they're excited to get back in the gym and to be practicing and, uh, you know, ready to go tonight to kind of shake off some of the stuff from Saturday and, and to refocus and be ready to go for the weekend. And we're not going to know how to behave with actually being at home in our house, in our rooms by, you know, 5 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon after the matches. So that'll be nice and refreshing. And. Uh, you know, we, we play pretty well in front of our home crowd. We've got a lot of families coming in to have a chance to, to check us out for the weekend and some other visitors, so very excited to be playing at home this weekend. Friday evening's match with Queens is set for a 7 p.m. start, uh, while Saturday's first serve with Catawba gets underway at 2 o'clock. We need to mention both of those matches are free to the public. We'll also be broadcasting those through the LMU Sports Network via video stream on the LMU Athletics website. Turning to soccer action from Saturday, Heli O'Dana and the Lady Rail Splitters took their unbeaten league record of 3-0 over to Hickory, North Carolina to take on the Bears of Lenoirine University in South Atlantic Conference play. LMU stood atop the league standings as the Sacks' only unbeaten and untied team entering the match, but Lenoirine quickly let them know that they too were in the hunt for a Sack regular season and conference and tournament title. By halftime, the Bears had taken a commanding 3-0 lead, having scored goals in the 5th, 16th, and 41st minutes of the match. Down 3-0 and having been held scoreless in the first half, many teams would have folded the tents and packed it up, headed to the house. Not the case for the Lady Rail Splitters. Michelle Hunter gave LMU a goal of their own in the 62nd minute of the match to make it 3-1 Lenore Ryan. And although the Lady Rail Splitters couldn't make up the deficit and lost the match, they held the Bears scoreless in the entire second half. In talking with head coach Helio Dana earlier this week, in spite of the loss, he was pleased with how his women's team played this weekend. Uh, I'm actually happy with the way the women played uh, over the weekend. I um, think we're ready to beat teams like that. But yeah, I take in consideration that we played at their place and, and um, you know, tough place to play. Uh, in the past, we've gone there, regardless of what the final score was, we went there to defend for dear life. This time we went there to play them. And in fact, it was one of those things that soccer sometimes makes no sense. We were the better team for the first 20 minutes. You know, we, we were, were actually possessing through their press uh, and we were um, getting in the box and doing things to even get the first goal. But they got some girls that the quality is undisputable and, and their first two goals were absolutely beautiful, you know. Uh, to which last year when they beat us, it took the goal of the year to beat us. You know, if we put ourselves in a position which it will take teams the goal of the year to beat us, I'm happy because people cannot do that every time, you know. So I, I don't need to change much apart from the fact that um, we probably could have put one or two more. But at the end of the day, heading to tournament possibly to see these guys again, the ladies are confident, you know. Uh, yeah, we won the second half, and, and we really outplayed them in the second half, and that's also a plus, but I'm not going to discard what we did in the first half either. You know? So uh, we're, we're definitely um, able to play these teams now. On Tuesday, the Lady Rail Splitters returned to the LMU soccer complex, licking their wounds but ready to get back on the winning track when they hosted the Trojans of Trevecca Nazarene University in an NCAA Southeast Region matchup. Last season, when the two teams met in Nashville, the Trojans came away with a 1-0 win in what was historically the two teams' first ever meeting in women's soccer. 
Tuesday, although both LMU and Trevecca struggled offensively in the first half. The Lady Rail Splitters broke the back of the Trojans during a 10-minute period of the second half of play by finding the back of the net in the 69th and 77th minutes of the match on goals by Marissa Kiernan and Nicole McKinney. The LMU de defense proved to be as solid as always down the stretch, recording the team's fourth shutout of the year. And after the match, Heli Odana praised his squad's effort. It work for it. I, I come in and their coach, uh, very well coached team, very organized, very athletic, worked very hard. They took everything out of us to win today. Yeah, in our level, Division Two, people will come with enough athleticism to challenge you, no matter who they are. And it, like you said, the defense will keep you in the game at times, because there will be times you'll be a little under the gun. They'll put pressure on you early in the game. It's always going to be hard. So it's a comfort when you have these kinds of defenders, because then, uh, as we say in our team, we chip away, chip away, chip away, and our numbers you know, how many people that come and play eventually will start wearing the other team out. That's when we, we can make a run. This Saturday, the Lady Rail Splitters travel over to Brevard, North Carolina for a battle with conference opponent Brevard College. The match will begin at 1 p.m. and will be a twin bill with the Lincoln Memorial University men. Folks, we've got a lot more to talk about here this evening. We're going to take a look at some other things that happened in last week's LMU Athletics. We've got the week ahead, and of course, a little bit later on tonight, we're going to be looking at the South Atlantic Conference Volleyball, Men's Soccer, and Women's Soccer standings. And that's all coming up just a little bit later on here on the Rail Splitter Athletics Report. Stay with us. MyCokeRewards.com. No matter whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, Subway of Harrogate and Middlesbrough has your fresh interest at heart. On your way to work, try one of our mouth-watering breakfast sandwich or flatbread omelets. If it's lunch or dinner time, choose from our wide selection of classic, select, or premium sandwiches, all made to your order. If you're serving a crowd, Subway has sandwich platters, giant subs, box lunches, and even cookie platters. Whether it's dine-in or carry-out, you can eat healthy and eat fresh at Subway. Subway, 362 Catawba Avenue in Harrogate, and on the corner of the Village Square Mall, Middlesbrough. It's the Old Town Grill. The Old Town Grill is a special place where you bring more than family, more than friends. Bring a hearty appetite. Because at the Old Town Grill, you'll never walk away hungry. A delicious change from the ordinary. The perfect place to bring the entire family. The best food and plenty of it. Join the fun and treat your appetite to something special. It's the OTG. The OTG is the place to be. I will help families adopt children from around the world and in our own backyard. I am teaching ethics to the next generation of lawyers. I will make a difference for the underserved of this region. I will be an advocate for my clients. As a prosecutor, I fought for those who couldn't speak for themselves. I'm a lawyer and professor. I will be a lawyer. I will be a lawyer. I will be a lawyer. Before we went to break, we were talking about soccer, and uh, we uh, now will cut into Lincoln Memorial University men's soccer. The LMU men's soccer team also traveled to Hickory, North Carolina last Saturday to take on the Bears in conference play. The Rail Splitters were coming off of a 1-0 home loss to league opponent Mars Hill earlier last week and were eager to get back on the win column as well. The Bears had other ideas about Saturday's match. And in fact, LMU and Lenore Ryan played through a scoreless stalemate until the 85th minute when LR's Josh Alderson scored with help from teammate Gabriel Jones to take a 1-0 lead late in the match. With time working against the LMU men, rail splitter Yuri Passos hit teammate George Byrne with a cross that was placed past the keeper into the net to tie the match at 1-1 in the 85th minute. Eventually, the match went to overtime and the rail splitters fourth such occurrence of the season. And as fate would have it, uh, at least for the third time this year, an extra period goal by the opposition squashed the rail splitters' hopes for the win as uh, LR's Daniel Delderfield scored six minutes, 50 seconds into overtime to hand the LMU men their fourth loss of the year and their second in South Atlantic Conference play. Earlier this week, we got Heli Odana's thoughts about the setback. 
in D2, man, soccer is so short, you know, I mean, we, we could be easily undefeated, easily. And it's not necessarily because how close the scores were, but how dominant we were in certain games that we lost. But um, it is what it is. Uh, it, it's not one of these, we got to change everything. No, we got to keep course, you know, we got to keep good de defense, which we do, uh, keep, keep the possession, which we have, got to put away a little more the chances that we create, but we got to get a few breaks. There's no doubt. I mean, our seniors probably will not like when I say this, but look all the way around. This is such a young team. You know, I got two seniors and, uh, and we're going to make it happen. You know, no doubt we'll, we'll come on a streak pretty soon, but, um, but at the end of the day, I have six underclassmen on the field at all times, you know, and these things cost sometimes. And, um, I think they're learning as it goes and they're getting better on critical times of the game as it goes. But um, I can't ask for more. That's what I'm telling my guys. I can't, they cannot just, let's, let's start over. No, 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 no. let's just keep track and, and uh, uh, things will start clicking. Unlucky break for the rail splitters. Uh, in fact, the rail splitters will have their backs to the wall again this Saturday when they travel to Brevard, North Carolina to take on the tornadoes of Brevard College on their home field. And according to Dana, his men's team is now in a must win situation when it comes to their remaining conference and regional matches. The distance I said this so many times from hell to he heaven to hell in, in D2 uh, men's is, is such a short trip because we could easily be undefeated. And we can also easily not qualify to the SAC tournament. You know, I mean, that's how hard this conference is. So we'll take one day at a time and, and Brevard, I'm not taking them for granted whatsoever. Saturday's men's and women's matches get underway at 1 and 3.30 p.m. in Brevard, North Carolina. Turning to golf on Monday and Tuesday, the Lincoln Memorial University men's golf B team participated in the King Invitational over in Bristol, Tennessee at Bristol Country Club. After posting an opening round of 296 on Monday, the rail splitters turned in a second day score of 290 to capture sixth place at the event behind tournament champion Erskine College, second place finisher Mars Hill College, third place institution Limestone College, Barton College who came in fourth, and host King who finished fifth. This Monday and Tuesday, the Lincoln Memorial University men's and women's golf teams travel down to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina to participate in the Myrtle Beach Intercollegiate, which will be held at Sea Trail Golf Resort. The event will be one of two outings remaining on the fall schedule for the Lady Rail Splitters, while the LMU men have three tournaments, including this week's Myrtle Beach Intercollegiate. Monday's opening round gets underway with a shotgun start, and we'll have results on next week's show as to how the LMU teams competed in that tournament. And moving over to cross country this weekend, Jeremy Donahue and the Lincoln Memorial University cross country teams venture up to Louisville, Kentucky for the Greater Louisville Classic. Both teams have been idle since their September 21st run in the Berea Invitational up in Berea, Kentucky. This weekend's event is one of the largest races both teams will run in this year and boasts a lot of good individual and team talent. And although the SAC championship isn't until later this month, Coach Donahue feels that this weekend's race will benefit both of his teams in various ways. Well, it's one of those benchmark races for us, one that we go to every year. Uh, great competition, great course. So we're able to see uh, how we stack up from year to year, from years past. And, uh, you know, again, great competition. You get 80-plus teams there, great atmosphere. You know, cross country is one of those obscure sports that – uh, when you get so many people that understand the sport in one spot, that love the sport in one spot, it, it creates great performances. So uh, we're excited to get two weeks of good training in before we head up there, and I think everybody will be ready to race pretty well here in a couple weeks. Uh, following this weekend's uh, Greater Louisville Invitational, next weekend both teams will run in the Tiger Twilight Invitational, which will be their final race before the October 26th South Atlantic Conference Championship. That'll be held at Black Mountain in Montreat, North Carolina. Folks, we're going to take another time out. When we come back, we've got some information to look at this week in terms of the latest South Atlantic Conference standings in volleyball, men's soccer, women's soccer. And then we're going to take a look at the upcoming week in Lincoln Memorial University Athletics. Stay with us right here on the Rail Splitter Athletics Report. At the foot of the Cumberland Gap, Lincoln Memorial University honors the vision and spirit of Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln's values are perfectly in sync with the modern educational experience at LMU. Our students find personal attention is a way of life and a way to success. If Lincoln Memorial University fits your vision of college, 
Visit our website at lmunet.edu for more information. I'll save a life. People's lives are in your hands. I can't have a bad day. I have saved a life. I will be a nurse. I will be a nurse. I deal with life and death situations. We touch a lot of lives every day. People's lives are in your hands. I will be a nurse. I will be a nurse. We represent the Coke brand, and we would love to somehow bring some kind of legal action against Coke Zero. There might be some taste infringement issues. There's really no legal concepts of a company bringing a lawsuit against itself. If this is the king of the jungle, they're acting like the toucan that's right. on the branch, real colorful and preening, right. and showing off, and hey, look at, look at us. I want to take a stick and knock that toucan off the branch. Yeah. Da, 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 da. The J. Frank White Academy is more than a high school. Your child will have room to grow in mind, body, and spirit. Small, safe learning environments, individualized learning plans, and cutting-edge technology. Every child deserves a quality education in a safe, nurturing environment. Our college prep program teaches a love of learning, self-discipline, and service to others. The Academy is fully accredited by Advanced Ed. You have a choice at the J. Frank White Academy. Folks, again, we want to remind you, if you'd like to keep up to date on all that's going on with LMU Athletics, always pull up the LMU Athletics website, www.lmurailsplitters.com. We've got every kind of information on there that you would want to know about Lincoln Memorial University Athletics, its student athletes, and everything going on with LMU Athletics. All right, let's take a look at some of the South Atlantic Conference standings now. As we go to women's soccer right here, Lincoln Memorial, at least according to the uh, SAC office, still at the top of the SAC standings. They're at 3-1, and 5-2-1 and one overall. Uh, Queens University, uh, first year member in the league, coming in in the two spot with a 2-0 and two record, 6-1 and two overall. They're followed by Lenore Ryan, and you might ask, well, how's Lenore Ryan in third place after having defeated Lincoln Memorial? Well, if you look at it, they're still undefeated, but they have a tie there as well. I don't know why the conference office has Lincoln Memorial in the top spot, but they do at this point. So 2-0 and one in third place, 5-2 and one overall. Tusculum, the pioneers from over there in Greenville, Tennessee, also with a 2-0 and one record, 4-3 and two overall. Wingate University, a big rival of Lincoln Memorial in the five spot this week, 2-1 and one, 5-1 and three. Anderson University comes in at the sixth spot, followed by Newberry. Carson Newman, an opponent in the upcoming week this week for LMU here at home, they're now at 1-1 one, one and one on the year going into this weekend's play, 2-2 two, two and two overall. They're followed by Catawba in the nine spot. Brevard comes in at 10 this week. That'll be LMU's opponent, of course, on Saturday. They're 0-2-1, 3-4-1. Then Mars Hill brings up the 11 spot. And in the cellar, Coker in their first season as a South Atlantic Conference member. Uh, incidentally, the South Atlantic Conference has recently become one of the largest conferences in NCAA Division II sports with the addition of Queens and Coker University. Moving over to the men's soccer standings, Queens University, first year member, 4-0, 7-1 overall. There's a new sheriff in town, folks, and everybody's gunning for him. I can tell you right now, Queens is coming in saying, hey, we're taking some backseat to nobody. Wingate University, the biggest rival for the LMU men anymore. They're three and one on the heels of Queens, five and two in overall play. Coker, the other new member, two one and one, three two and two in the standings. Lenore Ryan comes in in the fourth spot at two and one, six and two, followed by Anderson, two and two, five two and one. Mars Hill finishes out uh, or starts the back half of the top ten as Mars Hill is 2-2, two 2-5, and two, two and Catawba in the 7 spot, Lincoln Memorial all the way back in the 8 spot after finishing his runner-up last year, 1-2-1, and 3-4-1, and one. they'll battle against the Tornadoes on Saturday, Newberry in the 9 spot, followed by uh, in-state rival Carson Newman in the 10 spot, 1-2, and 4-2, and two. Tusculum comes in at 11, and Brevard rounds out the uh, 12 of the South Atlantic Conference teams. Let's move over to volleyball, Wingate University, no surprise there, Shelton Collier and his squad still undefeated in league play, 11-2 overall. They're 7-0 in the SAC standings. Anderson University, 4-1, 5-5. Mars Hill coming in in the three spot this week, 5-2, 7-4. LMU's got a win over them. They've got a win, I believe, uh, 
over several of these schools. Tusculum in the four spot at four and two, nine and four. But there you see LMU back in the five spot in the tie really for the four spot at four and two. And I would say they would get the nod there. I'm, again, I'm not sure why the conference standings have them. Uh, back in the five spot, they would get a half game lead over Tusculum since they beat them here at home. Eight and six overall, four and two in league play, and again their opponents this weekend at home. Lenore Ryan in the sixth spot, three and two, six and three. Newberry comes in at seventh, followed by Carson Newman in the eighth spot. Catawba at nine. Queens rounds out the top ten and still winless down there in league play. Brevard. They're 0 and 6, 3 and 7. Coker comes in at 0 and 7, having won only three matches this year at 3 and 12. So a tough start for some of those South Atlantic Conference teams this year, and uh, an interesting race going on as we enter the final month of regular season play here in October. So. Um, all teams are going to be jostling for position over the next few weeks. And of course, the SAC tournament coming up about the second week in uh, November for the uh, soccer teams and I believe for the, uh, the volleyball team as well. Uh, let's take a look at the upcoming week in Lincoln Memorial University Athletics. Well, Friday, there you have it. LMU, of course, uh, volleyball team hosting Queens University. That'll be a 7 o'clock start. Lady Rail splitters somewhat of a, of a favorite there. On Saturday, well, you've got women's soccer and men's soccer. Uh, the uh, women start at 1 o'clock against Brevard at home at the LMU Soccer Complex, while the rail splitters, that should be, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's not at the LMU Soccer Complex. That's in Brevard, North Carolina. Rail splitters and the tornadoes get underway at 3.30. Uh, in cross-country action, the LMU men and women travel up to uh, Louisville, Kentucky for the Greater Louisville Classic. That uh, start time is to be announced. Most likely that will be in the morning. And then in the afternoon, the volleyball team plays host to the Indians of Catawba College. Two o'clock start, again, free to the public in the Mary E. Mars Gymnasium. And certainly, we'd like to have your support out there for the Lady Rail Splitters this weekend. On Monday, the LMU men's and women's golf teams, here we are in October. What do they get to do? They get to travel down to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, of all places, to play a tournament. Uh, you know, I'm sure they're not going to be spending all of their time on the course, so more than likely they're going to head over toward the beach. Got to like it uh, if you're on the golf team right now or one of the golf coaches, but we wish them the best of luck. They'll play Monday and Tuesday at the Myrtle Beach Intercollegiate. And then, of course, uh, also on Tuesday, the LMU volleyball team will host arch rival Carson Newman, Shannon Mincy and company coming to Harrogate. That'll be a 7 o'clock first serve in the uh, Mary E. Mars Gymnasium. And anytime LMU and Carson Newman square off in volleyball action, you can guarantee there's going to be some fireworks. And we certainly wish the Lady Rail Splitters the best of luck there. Wednesday, LMU women's soccer. Of course, they'll host Carson Newman, 1 o'clock, LMU soccer complex. The men get underway at 3.30. No love lost between LMU and Carson Newman ever. And you can guarantee that that one, too, is going to be a, an action-packed uh, matchup between these two East Tennessee opponents. Again, free to the public. Folks, come on out and show your support for your Lincoln Memorial University athletic teams. If you're here in the tri-state area, it's, it's a free, free show. It's a free event. Come on out. Bring your lawn chair. Bring your cushion. Watch the events. Show support for Lincoln Memorial. They need it drastically. Uh, that's about all the time we have for this week. We need to tell you that uh, Homecoming 2013, just around the corner. That, of course, will be, we'll be talking about that on next week's show. A lot of festivities going on. They get started on Wednesday. So if you're an LMU alumni, come on over to campus. The LMU alumni department would love to have you here in attendance for 2013 LMU Homecoming. That's all the time we've got for this week. For everybody behind the scenes, I'm Rusty Peace. Until next week, good night, everybody.